we will start by considering a very very simple problem and this is a problem which i'm sure almost all of you would have seen uh, during one of the earlier courses uh, so the idea is that if we have a very simple bar let's say which is fixed at one end to the wall so it has a length l the area of cross section of this bar is a and the material with which this is made it has Young's modulus E and this bar is subjected to a tip load or a force of P. So one question which many of you would have come across earlier is that under these circumstances what is the tip deflection of this bar or delta and I am sure many of you would remember also that this delta is given by PL divided by AE. So this is a problem which all of you would have seen. And this is the problem which we will start with and we will consider different ways of formulating this problem. Okay. So let us consider the problem here and we will make certain simplifications. For example, we will consider that the length of the bar L is 1. Okay. Uh, the tip load applied to the bar is H. This is the tip load and in addition to the tip load there is also a UDL or a uniformly distributed load L which is applied to the, load, uh, to the bar um, and just to clarify the tip load will typically have units of newtons and the UDL will have units of newton per meter. So UDL is like a body force in a way. Okay. And we've also assumed that the area of the bar and the Young's modulus of the material are also one. If we were doing things in uh, SI units, then uh, you know length will be in meters, area will be in square meters, E will be in pascals, uh, and so on. Now let us consider the approach of uh, force balance to find out what are the governing equations for this bar. In this approach, what we usually do is we consider a differential element, uh, this shaded element here. Uh, we consider this differential element of length dx at a distance x from the left end, and we try to draw the free body diagram or FBD of this differential element. So, to the left face of the differential element, there is an internal stress uh, which is now revealed, which is sigma. Uh, to the right end, uh, this is sigma plus d sigma by dx dx, assuming that sigma can vary along uh, the x direction. Uh, the body force L of x uh, is acting along the length like this. Okay. So now if we write uh, the force balance equation or if we write summation of f in the x direction equal to 0, uh, this gives us, uh, so if you take this stress and multiply it by the area of cross section, uh, that is the force given by that. Then we take this stress and multiply this by area, so it gives the other force, uh, but this force is in the uh, minus x direction, hence we have a minus sign, this is in the plus x direction. And then this L of x is acting along the length in a per meter type of fashion. So this, uh, the total force becomes L times dx. So after we do some simplifications, we come up with the differential equation which governs the mechanics of this bar in this manner, which is A d sigma by dx plus L of x equal to 0. Now we make further assumptions. Uh, we say that uh, let's say this bar is linear elastic. So this will enable uh, a relation between sigma and strain through the Young's modulus. Now notice that here we are still considering that sigma is a function of x and E is a function of x only. Strain can be a function of x. 
okay, which means uh, it is possible for this bar to be a non-homogeneous bar where the Young's modulus uh, varies as a function of x. Of course, for uh, our case, we considered e equal to one. Uh, so this relation will simply become sigma equals epsilon e times epsilon, which means sigma equals to epsilon. Next, we make one more assumption that this system behaves geometrically linearly. What it means is that the strain displacement relation is linear. And you may recall from your basic mechanics of solids background that the strain in general uh, you know is not it doesn't only have this linear term it also also has uh, you know the square terms or it also has the uh, you know higher order terms but in this case we will assume that this is geometrically linear so after making these simplifications uh, we reach the further simplified form of the governing equations uh, and this i assume many of you would have seen uh, now earlier form uh, you know this one was in terms of the for the stress uh, being the variable in this case we have converted it uh, to being uh, in terms of displacement and if this equation uh, is solved with appropriate boundary conditions, uh, one can get the displacement uh, as a function of x. Uh, now, we will use a notation of this kind where u, x, x means uh, the second derivative of u with respect to x. Uh, now, to complete uh, the description of the system that we have, we need two boundary conditions. Uh, one is that at the left end, uh, there is no displacement or it is fixed. So u at 0 should be 0. And second is that at the right end, uh, uh, the force is equal to h, which means um, you know, area times the stress at 1 or l equal to 1 is equal to h. Now area is 1 and uh, you know, stress is nothing but e times strain at x equal to 1 equal to h now e is also 1 and strain we have defined as du by dx at x equal to 1 equal to h uh, so basically what we have written here is uh, u comma x at 1 equal to h now uh, when this system is combined with basically this uh, you know, this relation which is holding in for the entire x between 0 and 1 which is the main PDE or in this case ODE coupled with or supplied with two boundary conditions. Uh, this type of boundary condition uh, I think you know that this is called a Dirichlet type condition and this type of condition is called a Neumann type condition. So, this combined system of equations is what is the uh, governing equation for this bar. And this is the PDE which governs it. And if we were using the uh, you know, finite difference method, we would have worked with this form, uh, with the PDE form. So, you know, we can take this double derivative and we can write it in difference form and we can proceed with the solution. Okay. So this is uh, you know one of the very common forms which you would have seen and uh, this is also the so called strong form and we will later find out why this is called a strong form. But this is one of the uh, formulations of the bar problem.